Welcome to this lecture about website design. I plan to discuss how website design and development are key components when considering website marketing and how they both affect relationships with customers and their experience. So what I'd like to accomplish in this lecture is basically discuss the importance of website marketing. Why are we still discussing website marketing in light of the larger conversation about digital marketing? I'd also like to take everyone through the development process. So um, it begins with planning, then design, development, and of course, testing, and then end with a brief recap. In light of the rise of social media that has now made up a, a big part of digital marketing conversations, I don't want us to lose sight of other essential components of your business's digital marketing strategy and plan beyond, of course, social media tactics. So this is where website marketing comes into play. Your business's website is a key part of your marketing collateral and digital assets. Branding is especially important for website marketing because it is usually the first interaction that customers have with you. It, of course, makes the first impression. So a key question to consider in website marketing is, what do you want your business's website to communicate or say about your brand to key customers? So now that we've considered the importance of website marketing, let's take a look at the actual process, which your reading refers to as the web development process. There are four steps to this. So we have the planning phase, design, development, testing, and launch phase. So this process intentionally and strategically looks at how our business can create a meaningful touch point with customers. Let's start first with the discovery and planning phase. In this phase, we're looking at how the website can help to achieve business goals and objectives. As discussed in your textbook, there are a few guiding questions that will help you make the most out of the planning phase. Think about how your website will help to generate leads. Will it help to enhance conversion rates? Can it build trust among customers? And in what ways can the website solidify a foundation for a customer relationship? And speaking of customers, when you are designing and developing, always keep the consumer first by designing for their user experience. We'll get more into specific details about how to design for the consumer by placing mobile design and inclusive layout at the heart of your website design strategy. Next, determine the content strategy and website mapping. We also call this informa information architecture. So what kind of content and visuals need to be on the website, keeping the user experience in mind? After we've completed a strategic plan for the website, now we can move on to what I think is the fun part, the actual website design. The reading for this lecture defines it as the process of creating all the visual aspects of the interface. So this includes the layout, color scheme, images, logos, tabs, video font, and other elements. Collectively, the website design also helps to communicate credibility. So it's, it's clear that we must consider the components of credibility when designing, which are trust or the consumer's evaluation of your brand's integrity and character, expertise and the ability to meet their needs, as well as goodwill, the extent to which your website communicates, you have the customer's best interest in mind. Website design has changed drastically in the past 10 to 15 years because of the surge in mobile or smartphone use, at least in the Western part of the world. Most people view your business's website on their cell phones. So make sure, for example, fonts are large and avoid putting too much content on the site. It's more difficult for people to scroll through a lot of content on their phone compared to a desktop or a tablet. Considering other aspects of website design more broadly, let's first begin with layout. So for example, how are the content images organized? How do they collectively tell a story about your business? They need to go hand in hand. Design an inclusive layout with images of diverse individuals. This entails many different things, of course, like racial, gender, and cultural diversity. Also consider accessibility issues for those who have disabilities. Your website layout should be ADA compliant. And ADA just basically stands for the American Disabilities Act. Elaborating a little more on this point about website accessibility, your site needs to have unique titles and headings, have clear landmarks so that people can navigate your page more easily. Consider things like color contrast and, of course, font size. Include highlighted text, for instance. Add text to images in order to allow users who are vision impaired to understand what exactly is being displayed. According to the Bureau of Internet Accessibility, avoid displaying key information as images. It's, it's probably better to use text, honestly. 
The Bureau goes on to state that, for example, some websites use an image of a house to display the home button. But for those who are using screen readers, which are software programs that allow users who are blind or visually impaired to read the text, they treat this image as it would with any other image instead of stating home page. This consequently prevents users from understanding the layout and what's being displayed. Another thing to consider with layout are tabs. How many main tabs and sub tabs should you include? So that's a question that you definitely would want to ask. Where is the placement of the tabs? This is incredibly important as it affects the ease to which a customer can find information and this directly ties into navigation. Navigation is the process the user experiences while visiting your website. It is so important. In fact, it has a tremendous impact on conversions and sales. There is a general rule in the marketing industry that consumers, especially potential consumers, should be able to find what they need from your website in about three to five seconds. Anything longer than that could increase what we call bounce rates, which is basically the percentage of visitors who come to the website, but then they leave, which is where the bounce term, of course, comes from, <clears throat> rather than continuing to view other pages on the website. We definitely need to look at other aspects of design that affect the overall website navigation experience. So take font, for instance. The typography of content says a lot about your business and your overall brand personality. Sans serif fonts, for instance, are usually easier to read on screen like Helvetica or Arial. Lightweight fonts are associated with femininity and bold or heavy fonts are associated with masculinity. Uppercase fonts convey strength, whereas lowercase fonts convey compassion. I kind of joke to myself when I think about there, there's an actual science and, of course, art behind typography. Who knew that font evokes certain associations and feelings? Uh, but anyways, moving on to colors, the website color scheme should be in line with brand colors and uh, your brand's personality. The website's overall visual identity communicates the brand's uniqueness. So in other words, how do your customers know that it is your company when they land on your website? Okay, we are approaching the latter part of the overall web creation process. So once the web design process is done, now you're ready for the development stage. So again, the development step involves, as the reading for this lecture states, converting finished web designs into actual interactive websites. Let's consider a few terms as well as best practices. So for content strategy, it, it goes without saying that we have to consider CMS. And CMS stands for the content management system that is used to maintain and manage the content and website application. So this leads me to the type of websites you can choose for your, of course, for your website. <laughs> we have what's called a brochure site, which is a digital version of your business's brochure. It states important or main information, but it is static, so it doesn't really interact with customers in a meaningful way. Brochure sites usually do not provide a place where customers can place orders, but it is fast to put up and really affordable. So if your business is under a time constraint or, you know, you have a very limited marketing budget, um, brochure sites might be more beneficial. E-commerce websites, on the other hand, enable products to be sold. So then we have also the main types of website software programs to consider in the development process. One of the main types is called an off-the-shelf solution. So what happens is the CMS is built in advance, but because of this, your website will have fewer customized features, but it is generally affordable. Uh, WordPress and Squarespace are examples of an off-the-shelf solution. The other one to consider is bespoke development. So this is when the software program is designed for a specific website and it can be adapted for the various needs of the customers. There tends to be a lot more interaction with customers. So um, users can place orders. And again, this has more customized features, but it takes you know, some time to go live and it is more expensive. But bespoke development enables SEO readiness at the very beginning of the development process, which is really important. So that is something else to consider. And more broadly, since Bespoke is more customizable, websites using this program tend to stick out from competitors when, of course, they're using a different software program for their specific website. And then there are a few more things to consider in the development phase. So for instance, work on the page load time. Make sure it is as fast as possible. Slow page load time increases bounce rates. Include alt or alternative text that describes a visual on the website in the event that it doesn't load. 
And then lastly, similar to design, develop for other digital devices such as tablets and mobile. And this means developing for a variety of screens and considering navigation limitations. This brings us to the discussion about responsive versus adaptive websites. As the reading describes, and this is literally word for word, responsive websites uses the browser's screen space to determine how to reflow the original design content that was probably optimized for desktop, while an adaptive site provides a specifically tailored design uh, for the device you are using, which is typically the most common screen width. Uh, adaptive sites tend to be a little more expensive. And then this issue of URLs is, uh, is actually something that businesses should really consider. Strive to have what we call a clean URL, and I will show you all an example of that on the next slide. Uh, this affects the perceived credibility and overall feel of your website. So let's go ahead and take a look at the two URLs that I have here. So before Ohio State um, used a different um, program for our email system, now we're using Microsoft Outlook, the first URL that you see here was the URL for our, our email system. But now we have the one that's that's at the bottom there. So it's a, it's a bit messier. So minor details like that can have an, an impact on the ease in which your audience can find your website and their overall experience. All right, Whew. <laughs> we have finally made it to the last step of the development process uh, that is testing and of course launching our website. So when we are testing out our website, I'm gonna say this again and again, put the consumer first and focus on their experience. Possibly conduct A-B testing to see what potential and current customers think of the website. Basically what you would do is compare two versions of the website to see which one performs better. And then don't forget to go through the quality assurance process to make sure, again, the user will have the best experience as possible, technology is working okay, and of course, this can be accomplished through however you want to go about the A-B testing. So once you feel pretty good about the website, navigation, the technology, and the experience it provides to customers, both current and potential, you're finally ready to launch the website and show off your hard work. So let's go ahead and do a quick recap of the lecture. In a digital marketing world where businesses are so focused on social media efforts, we cannot forget about devoting time and energy into creating an effective website that is going to enhance conversion rates, generate leads, uh, increase sales, and of course, develop relationships with customers. The website is definitely one of the digital tools that makes a first impression on consumers. We of course need to go through the overall website development process, which are on the slide there. We should continuously evaluate our website and whether it's helping to accomplish the business's goals and objectives. Once we are done with the launch, it doesn't mean we never go back and reconsider our strategy and adjust. Do not become complacent with your website marketing strategy. Instead, constantly build upon it, making sure it is a key component in a multifaceted digital marketing strategy that reaches a wide base of consumers. I'll see you next time.